Hello, uh, this is Dr. Nur Badshah. Uh, uh, our today lecture is uh, about Jacobi method for a solution of uh, system of differential equations. Okay, and uh, I'll be talking about implementation of Jacobi method uh, in calculator and uh, also I'll be doing some programming in, in MATLAB. Okay, so first I'm uh, giving a basic idea of a Jacobi method that how does it work. So, uh, obviously, uh, we, can we will be considering a uh, system of n by n uh, linear equations and something like that, you see, a11 x1 plus a12 x2 plus a13 x3 and so on. That's the first equation. I hope you know that where do we apply this type of uh, system of equations. Uh, it has obviously a very important role uh, in, in engineering and science. Okay, so uh, to start with Jacobi method, what do we do? We basically uh, solve these equations. Equation number one, the first equation we solved that for uh, x1. For example, if I go back to those equations, we'll be solving this equation for x1. How do we do that? We just leave this part on the left side and taking all of them to the right side. That will give you something like uh, uh, x1 equals b1 minus a12 x2 minus a13 x3 and so on and then we divide it by a11 keeping in mind that you need to arrange these equations in a way that this value is non-zero right later on we'll be talking about uh, when would these iterations be convergent right so it, it, at the beginning the first step you need to, to know that this point should not be zero okay so uh, how, how how do we do that so as i said you need to solve e first equation second equation third equation and so on for x1, x2, x3 and xn respectively to get the following equation. You see as I explained the first equation uh, when it is solved for uh, x1 we get b1 by a11 minus a12 by a11 x2 and, and so on. Whereas if we solve the second equation for x2 so we will be getting x2 equals uh, b2 uh, a22 and uh, same similarly for all those values. Uh, and then the third equation is I said solved for x3 to get uh, b3 by a33 minus a31 x33 x1 and so on. Okay, and uh, we don't have x3 here. Obviously, the next time in this will be x4. Right? Uh, yeah. Sorry, this is some. Th there is a mistake. This is x3, not x2. Okay, because x2 is left on the uh, on, on the left side, so. Obviously, this is what this is x3. Uh, let me this correction. So, this is basically x3, this uh, typo. Okay, in this case, the next term will be obviously x4 uh, because uh, x3 is left on the other side. And then in the last equation, if you solve that for xn, so we'll be taking everything to the right except xn and dividing by a and n. Okay. That's that's what we have. It's it's almost same what usually we do in in fixed type method for solution of nonlinear equation. Okay, uh, so let's move further. Now, uh, once once you have solved these equations for x one, x two, x three, and so on, then we need to set some iterations. And for that iterations, what do we do? We need to introduce initial sum values. These are the initial approximations. You may take x11, x21, x31. You may call them x10, x20, x30. These are the superscript. Keeping in mind, they are not the powers. So they are superscript. Okay. So once we uh, we have these values, we put these values on the right side of those equations, and we update the values like that. You see, if you want to find x12, it means that the value of x1 in the second iteration. So that will be same. We will be using uh, these values, right? You see x1, x21, and so on, so on. So you see, we are using what? We are using all the values available here, which was taken as initial approximations. We get updated values of x1, x2, up to xn. Okay. Uh, in generally, that was for specific case, but if you want to have a general formula for n equal to one. 2, 3 and so on. So we can have this is x1 uh, n plus 1. You see this is the old value. This is a previous iteration value. So the previous iteration values are used here. 
to update the next iteration value keeping in mind in this case the value of uh, uh, n will be uh, starting from 1 and you will be having 1 and then 2 and 3 and so on okay so the values of our n you will be taking simply n equal to 1 to get x1 2 you will be taking 1 here this will be simply become 2 this will be 1 as well so it means you will be using the values which are initially selected and then uh, obviously you will be getting the new iterative values the same thing here you will be getting x2 2 by using x11 x2 x3 1 up to xn1 and and so on you see okay uh, so that obviously the, the question is when would this iteration be convergent whether they are convergent for uh, any any representation like that so the answer is obviously no so what is the condition for it so we move towards the matrix form and then in the matrix form we'll be talking about the uh, convergence condition of jacobi method okay uh, so if we have a um, uh, um, system of equation in the form ax is equal to b uh, you see in, in the previous slides so ax is equal to b we express this uh, system of equation in the form is n plus dx that is equal to b we are basically writing a is a sum of two matrices one is this n the other one is d where n is the non-diagonal part of the matrix a and d is the diagonal part of the matrix a obviously you know that a square matrix can be expressed in this way you can take a diagonal separately you can take the non-diagonal entry separately and then we do we do we simple multiply this inside by using distributive law it gives you nx plus dx right and then this is equal to b okay and uh, what, what what does it mean then because we are interested to find x obviously and so this this part is taken to the right side so we have dx is equal to b minus nx this implies x is equal to d inverse b because we want to convert this d to the right side so we have to multiply by d inverse so we get x equal to d inverse b minus d inverse nx right and uh, then we have uh, represented or replaced this d inverse b with c where as d inverse n with another matrix b right this matrix b is uh, usually known as iteration matrix okay this matrix b this is the iteration matrix this is basically important for the convergence or uh, responsible for the convergence or divergence of the matrix uh, of the system of equation of the jacobi method so this is known as iteration matrix uh, yeah it's a well known uh, theorem in, in mathematics that any iterative method that can be expressed in this form right so yeah that is the same thing for jacobian method as well it can be expressed in so we say if you have a system of equation a x is equal to b and uh, you want to apply any numerical method there are many numerical methods for solution of system of equations so this can be written in the form x is equal to b x plus some constant plus some c so b x plus c right so uh, it yeah where b is called obviously the same thing what we called here attrition matrix okay so x is equal to b x plus c so you see the same this jacobi, ma jacobi method is also uh, converted in the form x is equal to c plus uh, b x okay and then we start the iterations you see uh, you will be going for uh, n plus 1 the iteration that is uh, can be found as by using the previous iteration value keeping in mind this capital x is representing all the variables involved in the system of equation that's x1 x2 x3 uh, it might be a column matrix you see it will be in this form it is x1 it is x2 up to xn okay that's basically uh, a short notation for this column matrix we have denoted that by xn right capital xn 
the x n basically means the values on the uh, from the previous iterations will be having n here as well and when we have n plus 1 that means that's the updated value okay and so on right so uh, we we set these iterations so what would you do when when uh, you uh, apply calculator or you uh, basically use matlab programming so uh, we will be using this equation xn plus 1 is equal to c plus bxn because that's simple to implement in in uh, calculator and is also very simple to to implement in matlab as well okay another question is uh, uh, about the convergence so jacobi matrix co is convergent if the norm of this uh, iteration matrix is less than 1 okay but we usually don't do that there is an equivalent rule for for this condition to be to be held that is uh, if a matrix is diagonally dominant uh, by diagonally dominant what do you mean that uh, diagonal entries of a matrix of the coefficient matrix they must be uh, greater than the sum of the non diagonal entries for example if you have a matrix like that uh, let's suppose that is 4 that is 1 that is minus 2 then we have 2 and then let's suppose that is 6 this is uh, whatever it could be minus 6 as well and then we have 1 and then 3 this is 1 this might be 7 so you see the the sum of these two numbers forget about the negative sign that's the absolute sum you will be checking whether this number four in this case is it greater than the sum of these two numbers forget about what forget about the negative sign so it's one plus two is three so obviously this number is what this is greater than it similarly the second number again neglecting the negative sign whether it's greater than the sum of these two that's obvious two plus one is three and again we are getting what that's six and for the third row we are basically uh, looking at for the diagonal entries which is seven in this case it must be greater than the sum of these two numbers and that's obvious in this case this matrix which we have taken 4 1 minus 2 2 minus 6 1 3 1 7 this is diagonally dominant we shortly write that's dd so without uh, instead of checking that whether the the norm of a b uh, is less than or one or not so what would you do you simple check the coefficient matrix if the coefficient matrix a if that is diagonally dominant then the iteration matrix norm must be less than one okay that's the first step obviously you need to check if this condition is not satisfied obviously what would happen the system so the jacobi method will not converge to the actual root right uh, and if the given system is not diagonally dominant what would you do you would first use by uh, using row operations or you may interchange the equations to make it uh, diagonally dominant i hope it's clear to everybody now uh, that's an example where uh, how how do we do that how do we use this splitting right this example for example if we have this matrix 311 and then 273 3 minus 38 so this matrix could be written in the form uh, 011 and 203 and then 3 minus 30 you see we have excluded diagonal from here and we have made that 000 and plus this is 300 070 008 so you might see that these numbers if you add these matrices together you will get back this one so we have basically uh, uh, written this matrix as a sum of two matrices where one is a diagonal matrix and the other one is a non diagonal matrix okay uh, so that w w you you might have uh, aware that sometimes we express this matrix a as a product of two matrices one is lower triangular the other one is upper triangular that is known as LU factorization but in this case we are not doing that type of factorization we are basically expressing this matrix as a sum of two matrices and you, you may see the, uh, whether or you can check it by yourself whether this matrix is diagonally dominant or not you can check that okay so let's uh, do do the example for it how does it work and uh, so the first step is uh, let's suppose we have this system of equations ax is equal to 6 1 1 1 4 minus 1 1 minus 1 5 and then x y z that is equal to 26 and 7 and now keeping in mind you have to check whether this matrix is diagonally dominant or not so the answer is yes it is diagonally dominant because the sum of these two numbers is 2 which is less than 6 the sum of these two numbers is also 2 which is less than 4 and the sum of these two numbers is what that is 
2 as well and it is obviously less than 5. So, this matrix is diagonally dominant. So, if you set uh, those uh, uh, Jacobi iterations, the iterations will be convergent. Okay. Right. So, we can, we can split this matrix as I have done a bit earlier that this matrix will be split as 0, 1, 1. I am just excluding diagonal from this matrix. That is the n matrix where is the diagonal part is written in another matrix. Okay. So, that is n plus d. Okay, and that's the right hand side which is B. Now, what do we do uh, if you see from that uh, concept D inverse? Uh, yeah, this is this is the well known concept that inverse of a diagonal matrix you do not need to find those uh, 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 a joint of a matrix and determinant of a matrix and then you, you do not need to use that method. Uh, inverse of a diagonal matrix is simply taking inverse of its diagonal entries, right? That is the inverse of what? Inverse of this diagonal matrix. So, we need to find B first. B was, if you remember from previous slides, B was D inverse into N. Okay, And we, we, we multiply this D inverse with N, where N is this matrix, you see 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, minus 1. So, again a multiplication of a diagonal matrix, the inverse of a diagonal matrix is a diagonal matrix and you multiply a diagonal matrix with any matrix, you will simply divide or multiply every entry with a diagonal entry. That means 1 onto 1 by 6, this 1 into 1 by 6, this 1 into 1 by 4, this minus 1 into 1 by 4, this 1 into 1 by 5, minus 1 into 1 by 5 as well. So, that is basically what this is the D inverse N. Okay? And we have to find C as well, where C is simply D inverse into B. You should remember that we have done a bit earlier. So, C that is equal to D inverse into B multiplying this matrix again with what with with this uh, column matrix which was b that is 26 and 7 so if you multiply it again as i said you have simply dividing 20 by 6 so we get 20 by 6 that give you 10 by 3 and 6 by 4 which give you 3 by 2 and 1 by 5 into 7 that is 7 by 5 so this is our c okay and then we set for the iterations you should remember we need to set the iterations that is x n plus 1 that is equal to bxn and then plus c okay which c was found already that is simply uh, d inverse into b and b is found as d inverse into n right and uh, then you need to have some initial value right as i said you need to set x of 1 or x of 0 whatever you call it so we basically take that as this quantity you can choose any any vector right you may take 0 0 0 you may take 1 1 0 something like that but we are doing what? We are basically choosing this C as our initial value as well, our initial approximation as well. Okay, and then we do uh, the following values. You see, the first iterative value is what? That's the that's the matrix in simplified form when you divide those one by three, one by you know, ten by three, and so on. And then we multiply this iteration matrix. This is you see minus one by four. This is minus 1 by 10 by 6 and this is 1 by 4, this is 1 by 5, minus 1 by 5. So, it is simplified already. Okay. So, you take this C, this is our initial value and uh, then we do what? We simply multiply this with the, uh, with this matrix to get the first iterative values and then we do same thing with here to get this next value and so on, so on. When you do that, so the eighth iteration will give you 2.991 the ninth one is giving you 2.995 you see the result is true up to three decimal places this is true up to three decimal places and this one also almost equal to three decimal places so we assume that in this case the solution is what that is three you see 2.9995 and one and one so solution of this system of equation is one so next what i'm doing i'm just doing these steps these iteration by using calculator okay and let's do that by using uh, a calculator I hope you will be able to do that as well. So, first thing you need to do that in calculator to go to the matrix mode, uh, you just click that uh, mode, right? And then we have matrix mode here in 6. So, you can simply press that 6. Now, we need to have three matrices keeping in mind. One is C, one is this matrix B, and this part is also the previous iterative values that is X. But uh, if you see, we have taken these these two matrices same, so mm, it will be okay for us. We might we may define only uh, two matrices. Okay, I will define this matrix first, 
let me call this matrix is matrix A so that is given in a 1 so I will just simply press 1 and I need to have a size 3 cross 3 you see here so I will be pressing again 1 to get the matrix 3 cross 3 so I am just plotting these values the first value is 0 for this matrix you see you may you may uh, use the other uh, matrix as well which was in the fraction so yeah as I said you can use this matrix as well yeah this one 0 1 by 6 1 by 6 1 by 4 minus 1 by 4 or you can use that simplified form as well it's up to you okay so I think it's better to use these values so mm, yeah so the first value is 0 simply put 0 here okay and then enter that uh, maybe equal and the next value is minus 0 0.1667 0 0.166 and 7 the next one is minus 0 0.1667 okay and then we move to the next call uh, row which is minus 0 0.25 okay and then equal the next value is 0 so we simply put the equal the next value is 0 0.25 okay and that is this one the next value is minus 0 0.2 okay minus 0 0.2 and then we press equal then again 0 0.2 and we have equal so we we have this and the last one is 0 obviously so we simply put the 0 okay so we have now matrix uh, a uh, presumably we would need what we would need this uh, matrix b as well and we would need this matrix as well right but you see they, they are same we have taken initially uh, x x and yeah, x naught that was taken as uh, c so as i said earlier okay so uh, we we go to this now shift and then press this four okay because i need to have another matrix so for that purpose i would go for two that's again I, it will give me some data i call this again matrix b so that is two as well and I would need 3 cross 1 matrix, right? So I'll be going to 3 here. So I press 3. Now I will be giving this this matrix to it, which is 3.333. Uh, so 3.333. It's for, uh, and then you simply press equal. The next value is 1.5. Okay. You can use the fraction numbers as well. The next value is 1.4 okay so that is uh, done so we have now matrix b as well so we have matrix a we have matrix b if you are choosing this matrix differently as i have taken x of 0 is equal to c but if you take it differently then you need to define another matrix as well you may call it c but i presume it's okay because this is the best option for initial values so all the time you can take this value is this one the c value you can take that as your initial guess so uh, let's clear the screen and then we have to set these values so what would i do shift and then go to four and then i'll be taking matrix a okay so i take matrix a that is mat a so it is at three multiplied by what that's mat b you see we called it mat b okay so shift and then 4 and again you have mat b so that lies at 4 so this one is done with this one and then i would need plus plus mat b as well so i go to 4 and i will take 4 again in that case uh, when you have taken x of 0 is equal to c so you will be taking plus mat b if you have taken a different matrix let's suppose that is mat c so you will be simply then adding mat c here but we don't need that okay so we have done that now simply press equal uh, we get the first value is to see 2.8499 okay and the next value if you want to see the next value simply press this downward to get 1.0116 and something the next one is if it presses down the next value is 1.03334 so you see that that's what we have 1.0333 and then 4 okay uh, now what how would you do the next step right 
So, the next step you see this this is fixed this is same so that is plus met B it is fixed this matrix is also fixed now this matrix has changed. So, what would you do this this uh, the, this result is already saved uh, in, in, in here. So, uh, with which variable you can go just clear the screen. So, what would I do I will simply again go to 4 I would need mat A right. So, I just press 3 2 3 yeah. 3 because mat is 8 3 multiplied by what multiplied by this matrix now you see this is the outcome of that one. So, that is stored in that is the main point you should uh, keep this in mind and that is 4 again and I will be now taking this math ans this math ans is basically stored this value ok. So, I will click 6. So, you see I am having what mat a multiplied by mat answer. So, it means I am multiplying this quantity with this one ok and plus the same thing with the matrix b. So, I am taking plus shift and then 4 and then we have 4 as well mat b ok. So, that is uh, pressing equal here you will get the next iteration you see the next value is 2 point almost 9 and 1 5 because uh, th we have taken here up to 4 decimal places, but in fact I am taking here uh, almost 7 decimal places. So, yeah it is ok there might be different a bit difference in the iteration. So, you see the next time is 1.0458 the next time it will be 1.033 and so on because the values are changing it is because uh, all because of uh, number of uh, significant figures we are considering here right. So, you will press uh, you will do say the same steps again you just clear it you go there uh, to 4 and now you will be doing what again 3 multiplied by what multiplied by again that uh, uh, you see mat ans you press 6 and then you go for plus and then you should do that again and you see in this case you will be going for mat b. So, we go for 4 again. So, you see we have uh, what we have simply uh, if you go back that is mat a multiplied by mat ans mat ans basically means this outcome ok and mat b is this matrix. So, you simply press equal in this case. So, we have the next value is 2.98 and so on so on. So here is we are we are approaching towards that 2.99 and so on ok and the next value will be obviously 1 point something 1.010 1 1.0106 and so on. So, you see we are converging toward this point you can repeat this process again and again and again to to uh, I hope uh, you understood the concept you will do the same thing again and again all the time. Yeah, uh, now let me do that in uh, MATLAB as well because uh, it is easy to do in MATLAB. Uh, so, let, let me open a new file here first ok and uh, that is uh, we need to define a function here first. Let me call that x because I am interested in the solution of the system of equation. Let me call that Jacobi. So, whatever you call it is it should uh, give some uh, something different name ok because uh, Jacobi might be a built in function for the, the matrix for sorry for, for, uh, for Jacobi method. So, you may give Jacobi underscore uh, my whatever the name you can you want to give it. So, you can give it then the matrix A that will be input matrix the coefficient matrix and the matrix B that will be the right hand side for the matrix and then we have maybe number of iterations you may give it capital N ok. So, that is that is ok. So, you define this function right these uh, yellow caps that they are basically mean that you have not defined X and you have not used these. So, once you use them uh, obviously, it will disappear from here right. So, we have to split this matrix into two matrices one is uh, simply the sum the, the, the diagonal matrix and the other one will be the uh, non diagonal matrix ok. So, let us suppose we call it diag. So, diag diagonal you can call that diagonal. So, that is basically give you diag and then diag this is the command used for picking diagonal from the from the matrix ok. You see if you do that uh, let me practice that for you. Uh, if I uh, take a matrix A uh, that is a random matrix any matrix and a four order. So, it will def uh, basically display this matrix, but if I want to take the diagonal matrix of this one. So, what would I do I will simply take diag of 
diag of this matrix A, when I put that, it will give me only diagonal matrix, you see. So, this is a command which is used for what? For the diagonal matrix. And then we have to find the non diagonal matrix as well. So, I am just talking, calling it n diag. Okay. And that will be what? It will be simply A minus uh, diagonal. This diagonal, D i a g o n l. Okay. So, diagonal. So, that will basically give me what? N diagonal. You see, if you do this thing here, and uh, I simply uh, difference this ans from me because we call this is saved as ans so a minus ans you see everything is same the only diagonal becomes zero so uh, this this has given me diagonal matrix and this has given me what this has given me uh, a minus diagonal matrix okay now if i want to find x i would need some initial value for x as well so uh, whatever you can define that later on as well so let's find matrix b first and b was uh, inverse of d you can use this command inverse of d multiplied by the matrix n dike yeah this is n dike inverse of d multiplied by n dike whereas c is what c is equal to again inverse of d multiplied by what multiply by that p part which will be coming from upward from the input so we have now uh, uh, b and c both and then you can take that uh, initial value is uh, x okay so x is equal to what x is equal to c initially if you remember i told you you can take that c so we may take x is equal to simply c and then we set an iteration for uh, maybe i is equal to 1 to n okay and then we take x is equal to b steric x plus c okay and uh, if you if you want to store all the iteration uh, iterative values so you may ha you have to use some indices then otherwise that's okay you'll be getting in this case you'll be getting the final value only right it says that you should use a uh, this this method not inverse it's okay it doesn't matter you can use inverse and for large system you may have some issue then otherwise it's okay in this case it's okay okay so you see at the end what will you have you will be having a uh, simple uh, system of uh, uh, solution at the last row if you want to uh, display the remaining as well so I'll go for something like that. Okay, so that will be giving be uh, um, saving all the iterative values as well. So let's suppose let me save that uh, somewhere. Let me change the directory because I want to have this uh, in somewhere in my directory somewhere in MATLAB directory, or maybe I. there and save that in some folder here I'm having something let's have this one then this one so you see you can you can give uh, any name to it so I'm just giving it uh, Jacob underscore my by default it will give you the name which is uh, basically you have given to that so i'm just saving it so we have saved that if i run it it will not run because obviously the directory are not same but i want to change the directory from here so it will ask me do you want to change the directory i would say yes change the directory but it will be giving the error because i have not defined these matrices so if, if i use the same matrix i've done a bit earlier which was here you see that matrix was uh, 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 let's suppose i have a system of matrix these are the these are the matrices we can simply take from here it was uh, 511 so when you do when you run this you will be obviously running that it command window so i'll be taking x is equal to the name of the the, the program or may name of the file so it is jacko b underscore uh, my okay and then i'll be giving the the input values that is uh, the matrix which is uh, usually we write that in the form of uh, you just enter square bracket so the first value was uh, you see six one one. So simple write six. 
one one then semicolon the next one is uh, one four minus one one four and minus one I'll be giving a diagonally dominant matrix obviously otherwise the iteration will be not converging and then we have one minus one five one minus one and five so that's the square matrix we had there and then we'll be giving what we'll be giving uh, the right hand side as well which was uh, 26 7 right so you can take 20 then semicolon just to get to I uh, just forgot it was 26 7 yeah so that is 26 semicolon and then 7 because I need to have a diagonal matrix and let's do maybe 10 iterations okay it could be anything so let's do 10 iterations now if I run this one so what would happen it will just save all the iterations and uh, it will be oh what did I do I forgot something it says that something is wrong what is wrong yeah it's okay this bracket is also okay where is that okay and this is okay as well so do you have uh, any bracket missing in the code or something Dig of tiger of face okay so where am maybe we define a matrix like in this way okay uh, you can define matrix A is okay you can copy simply this part from here it's control C and then I give it here control V I check the matrix so that's okay and I just give B so B is what B is for me is uh, this matrix oh sorry 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 I just use a semicolon here that should <laughs> that was a mistake sorry yeah it should be comma whatever you can do in this way as well that's okay now let me do that in this way I just for uh, I made a mistake this one that is uh, it should not be a semicolon okay it should be a comma so yeah this is equal to this one so we have control B then I'm using uh, just displaying it to have a column and then we can go for uh, X is equal to again Jacobi underscore my and then I will give a matrix then small b and then I'll give 10 iterations so this will give me the solution it's see undefined function where did I do sorry I just made a mistake there yeah it should be diagonal it's a silly mistake usually we do that is a diagonal so it is also diagonal let me save that and let me run that again so it will now work possibly you know what is saying it says the matrix order must be yeah mm, it's because of this thing it is all because of this so let me let me display the last one okay then so it is uh, it is now okay right so did I make some mistake because I'm having 3.97 there are only 10 iteration that's the last value for it so we may need some more iterations or what it should not be like that so it's already converged to this root so did I make any mistake in the in the matrix or something six one 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 yeah I think I've made a mistake here what is the matrix here six one 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 four one and twenty six seven so should be the same thing right right so yeah might be making some mistakes somewhere so that's the way to do it this is the basically way and uh, if you see 
this it's uh, diagonal okay sorry if we go back to the method so I think I have just uh, uh, left this minus sign here because it should be minus D inverse B is minus D inverse yeah this is minus B okay it's minus B and similarly if you go back to the method we have expressed that in the form in the matrix form it was if you go back to this one you see that is uh, minus B into this one B is basically equal to minus D inverse and sorry it was a mistake it's minus D inverse into n okay so that's why it was uh, wrong we are getting we were getting wrong solution so this will be minus so and now if you run this one with even though with 100 iterations we will be getting you see now we are getting right solution 3 1 1 after 100 iteration we got the correct solution okay so I hope you understood what I've done yeah initially when you do programming live we thought oh, there are there are always some sub uh, you will be making some mistakes obviously so yeah so that's it uh, I hope you understood the method uh, and see you uh, in next lecture sometime info uh, the serial method with calculator and MATLAB thank you very much